About a decade ago, Jennifer Tiga discovered her grandfather was Eamon Goth, a butcher, a, Eamon Goth, the butcher of Plasgo, Plazow, the evil Nazi commandant who was featured in the movie Schindler's List. Her discovery took her to Israel and Krakow, Poland, to learn more about her ancestry and come to terms with it. The result? Her book, My Grandfather Would Have Shot Me, A Black Woman Discovers Her Family's Nazi Past. Joining us from Skype from Hamburg, Germany, is Jennifer Tiga, author of My Grandfather Would Have Shot Me, A Black Woman Discovers Her Family's Nazi Past. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. I, I, I find this absolutely fascinating. I, I was telling you during one of the breaks, I, I watched an interview of you on German television um, a few weeks ago. So we are really absolutely thrilled to, to have us here today, have you here with us today. I want to jump right in um, uh, and, and talk about the book, um, but mostly uh, I wanted to first ask you if you could just recount a story I saw about how you discovered this. I believe you were in a library in Hamburg uh, and were drawn to a book. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Good morning, Michelle. Yes, absolutely. Well, this was a moment that one could say divided my life into before and an after. It was in the Hamburg library, a huge library. Um, I was in the psychology section, not in the history section, what one might assume. And I saw a book on a shelf. It was a book. I could only read the spine. I didn't know the author. I didn't know the title of the book. And I pulled the book from the shelf. It had a red cover. And I saw a small black and white photograph on the side. It was a picture of a woman, and I could read the title, the subtitle, and it said, Monica Goethe, daughter of the concentration camp commandant from Schindler's List. One needs to know I was adopted as a child. So I um, started uh, leaving through the book, through the pages of the book, and I saw there was text, and there were also photographs. And there was one photograph that reminded me of my biological mother. And there was another uh, picture, a small picture of a woman that reminded me of my biological grandmother. And there was even a name under the uh, picture. It was a caption and it said, Ruth Irene Good. And that was the name of my biological grandmother. So very quickly I uh, went through the rest of the book and at the very end, I saw a summarization of biographical details. And these details perfectly matched the information that I had surrounding my adoption paperwork. So at that moment, it became clear to me that it was not just a random book I was holding in my hands. It was a book that told the story of my biological mother and my biological family. This is how I found out. So, so explain to us then how, like, how did you come to be? Because we're obviously talking about about Nazi Germany, and you, you know, quite obviously are a, a are a black woman. So, how 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 did you end up being a descendant um, uh, of this person? Well, I am biracial. My father is mm -hmm. Nigerian. My mother is German. Um, my parents met, uh, and uh, my mother is the daughter of Amon Gert. Mm -hmm. Amon Gert, name, many are not familiar with the name itself, but he became known to a, a wide audience because he was portrayed by um, Ralph Fiennes in the movie Schindler's List. So my biological grandfather was the commandant of a Nazi concentration camp. And you, um, I believe, did you, uh, you went to visit the area where the, where the concentration camp um, once, once stood. I guess it's an area now where you go for remembrance. Yeah, that's true. Well, um, after I made the discovery, it was the period I was in a sort of shock because it was something that was not known to me. I mean, I was almost 40 years out at that time. I didn't know anything about that part of my identity. So to find out more and also to come to terms with the situation, I went to uh, Krakow and there's a memorial uh, that I visited. Because I also have a very personal um, connection to, to Israel, to the Jewish people, without knowing anything about my families, my biological family's historical past, I lived and I studied in Israel, so I speak fluently Hebrew. And somehow with all what happened, I felt a need to go there, to see it by myself, to go there, to remember the victims. So yes, I went to Krakow, and it's very close, Krakow is the city that is very close to the former concentration camp. And I, I, I went there also to the villa, the villa that you know from the movie, um, to, to find out more. And some 
somehow to come to terms with the new situation that was very disturbing for me because it was very scary and very frightening yes. to be um, yeah to be blood related to someone like Amon Gert is uh, yeah it wasn't wasn't uh, easy you know, I, I, this is really just so fascinating. Um, we, we're, we're running a, a little bit short on time, but so I wanted to end by asking you, um, you know, how has this, how has this impacted your life now that you have found out about your heritage and you've written this book? What is different about uh, your life now versus the life you had before you knew uh, more about your family heritage? Well, a lot of things changed. I mean, I was suffering depression for a long time, also because of the early deprivation, obviously, but also because of the shock of the toxic family secret what was kept. And today my life is different. I, I turned something, I would say, negative into something positive. I am in contact with lots of survivors, and I see that for them it's fantastic to see that the good line did not um, evolve in a way that they expected and that I'm so different. I mean, look at me. I mean, just the color of my skin. In. But that's one thing. What is even more important is the character, and I don't uh, don't uh, resemble him in that uh, aspect at all. I believe in humanity first. I think is something that is uh, essential for our society, and therefore I think to speak about it, speak about it loudly to white audience, is something that enriched my life and hopefully also the lives of many others. Well, this is fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't going to cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.